even though there are tons of disaster movies or articles that talk about Yellowstone at super volcanoes in Wyoming and Idaho will erupt violently every year, we are sure of that currently incapable of producing volcanic eruptions of any kind, including very severe volcanic eruptions small one. We know this because of the predictable nature of the massive magma chamber at Yellowstone contains, depending on the source used, between 4,000 and 11,500 cubic kilometers of magma. In any magma chamber, magma is divided into two categories. Solid and melted. Solid magma is a semi-solid to solid rock full of crystals formed due to its slow cooling at depth. If solid magma is contained in a magma chamber with a basaltic composition, a, a type of rock known as gabbro. By contrast, melt represents what you usually associate with it when you try to imagine magma, as the name suggests. It represents molten rock in a molten state. In volcanoes all over the planet, one way to determine if a volcanic eruption is imminent theoretically possible is to determine the percentage composition of the magma chamber of molten and solid materials. It is widely recognized that the portion of a magma chamber must be at least 35%. 50% melt by volume is theoretically capable of producing an eruption. Because the magma chambers of Yellowstone's vast supervolcano contain between 5% and 15% is melting, meaning there will be no eruption in the near future unless a quite fast and drastic changes occur in the magma chamber. This is why we don't believe Yellowstone will erupt any time in the next 1,000 years maybe 10,000 years. If we compare the maximum melting percentages measured in magma chambers at various volcanoes listed below, you will notice that only the systems that are above are mentioned above the 35% threshold has erupted in the last 1,000 years. New scientific papers but then, a new scientific paper referenced on screen was published, and it was shows something quite surprising. This paper shows that the melting percentage of the Yellowstone magma chamber reaches a maximum at no 15% but 28%. However, Mammoth Mountain, which according to some definitions could theoretically be considered part of it the Long Valley Caldera last produced an eruption via phreatic explosion only in 700 AD years ago. Or, between 1980 and 1982, the magma pool that had infiltrated under Mammoth Mountain advanced from 10 to 3.0 kilometers deep before it solidified, it's still there today and caused large amounts of carbon dioxide to seep to the surface, forming that tree zone on the mountainside. Meanwhile, this magma most likely comes from a completely separate magma chamber with those in Long Valley, some of the models, claimed to be from Long Valley magma chamber. However, if an eruption was theoretically impossible at Long Valley, how could it happen, close to the surface? Therefore, we have several possibilities. First, we may have underestimated the amount of melt in the Long Valley Caldera magma chamber, and somewhere there is a section of magma chamber with more than 35% by volume melt. The second possibility is that we have measured the melt correctly, but our threshold is 35% the figure is incorrect and may need to be lowered under certain circumstances. The third possibility is the simplest explanation in my opinion, in the presence of magmatic intrusion under Mammoth Mountain does not represent the magma pool of Long Valley magma but a separate magma chamber. Yellowstone analysis with this in mind, predict a new melt in the Yellowstone magma section space in a new scientific paper is 1% higher than the maximum measured figure Long Valley. Although theoretically this could indicate that Yellowstone is actually capable of production eruption in the near future, this thing will only happen if we understand it and hope a lot of the pre-existing science is wrong on this topic. In other words, new estimates are obtained through different methodologies and other approximation, therefore making it not a perfect hard number it might be as high as a factor of two, although it could be true. Various previous papers suggested the melt volume ranged from 5% to 20%. We don't know for sure which figure is the most accurate, 